From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening. Opening argument started this morning for the trial of former Alaska Nanook hockey player who was accused of rape that occurred last year. We have more now on this report. 24-year-old Nolan Youngman was charged with two felony counts of sexual assault for allegedly forcing his victim to have sex with him at a UAF apartment. The prosecution, led by Earl Peterson, started off the opening arguments with a basic rundown of what the victim did before the alleged assault took place. He said Youngman came over to the victim's apartment with a friend to hang out with her roommate. According to the prosecution, the victim went to bed shortly after Youngman arrived. Youngman stayed and played strip Jenga and drank wine with her roommate and his friends before he went up to the victim's room and allegedly raped her. He was on top of her. She tried to push him off. She kept telling him no. She kept telling him to stop. And as she tried to squirm, put his hands and pinned down her shoulders and held her there while he continued to have sex with her. Just Youngman's lawyer, William Ingoldson, said in his opening statements that the sex was consensual and she was just mad he left the bedroom after it was over. The defense argued the police work done by investigator Kyle Carrington was not thorough and Youngman's arrest was because of the pressure put on by UAF's Title IX sexual harassment policy. But it was consensual. He told Investigator Carrington, yeah, we had sex. We had sex that night and told him everything. And Investigator Carrington, right after that, arrested him. So he's heard Nolan Youngman say we had sex. That's all the evidence he has now, and he arrests him. He hadn't done the lab test yet to check that. But more importantly, he hadn't even talked to the two other people that were there. U.S. crude oil prices slid today, hitting 12-year lows as domestic stockpiles continue to grow. That translates to the lowest gas prices in Alaska in nearly a decade. Alaska North Slope crude oil yesterday was at $28.39 a barrel, and it's even lower on the international market. Brent crude closed today just about $30 a barrel. Patrick DeHaan, a senior petroleum analyst at GasBuddy.com, said OPEC still appears to be the driving force behind the low oil prices. OPEC and other producers have been talking about cutting production, but so far no deal has been reached. Current oil prices are causing major issues for the Alaska state budget, which depends mostly on oil produ production for revenue. Oil has fallen almost 75 percent since mid-2014 as global crude output exceeded demand. In some states in the Midwest, gas prices at the retail level now at the lowest since 2004. In Alaska, it looks like prices uh, the lowest since early 2007, so not too far off the mark is Alaska, where statewide average today, a mere $2.23 a gallon. Oil again today down another $1.24 to $26.21. The decline at the pump still oil being a main culprit. An Anchorage Democrat has introduced legislation that would levy fines and potential jail time for people caught trapping too close to public trails in Alaska. House Bill 306, introduced this week by Representative Andy Josephson, prohibits the setting of a trap or snare for animals within 200 feet of a campsite, recreational beach, roadside rest, scenic site, or public trail. Josephson says it seems wrong to ask trail users to be constantly on the lookout for dangerous traps within just a stone throw of the trail and recreational areas. If convicted of the Class B misdemeanor, offenders would face a $500 fine or 30 days in jail or both. That punishment increases to a $1,000 fine and 60 days in jail if the violation caused physical harm to an individual or domestic animal. Alaska Trappers Association spokesman Pete Bust says that he understands the intent of the bill but believed it's too broad-based. It would effectively prohibit trapping on all public land everywhere because of their loopy definition of what constitutes a trail. Basically, any footpath or place that anybody would walk would fit that definition. We certainly don't encourage trapping on heavily used public trails. And in fact, we discourage people from trapping in those places. When we come back tomorrow, the Carlson Center will be the scene for a special event to bring more awareness of heart disease. Also in this week's interior attainment, RCPC is getting ready for the, their annual fundraiser. We'll tell you more about what that is. Stay with us. 
Welcome back. Heart disease is the leading cause of death for women in the United States, killing one in every three each year. It's the biggest overall killer of Americans. Tomorrow, the American Heart Association will have a special annual event dedicated to women at the Carlson Center. The Go Red Conference and Luncheon will focus on heart disease, how it differs for women, and what women can do to lessen their risk of heart problems. The keynote speaker is a food educator from New York who will talk to the audience about how to maintain a healthy lifestyle. So Go Red for Women is a movement that teaches women about heart disease, and it's the number one killer of all Americans, but oftentimes women have different symptoms than men do, and so it's really about expressing those differences so that women can be aware and get help sooner. I want to help them get healthier by choosing better quality foods, making the effort to exercise on a daily basis, getting some sunshine when it's available, and just really nourishing themselves on a really deep level. Tickets are still available for the 2016 Go Red event. The doors will open at 8.30 a.m. for a silent auction and early programs with lunch beginning at 11. Local artists are teaming up with nonprofits for an evening of fun and fundraising. Mike Fussell has more in this week's That's Interior Tainment. Those looking for a taste of art this year will be served a Starry Night themed evening benefiting Fairbanks Counseling and Adoption. The Mount McKinley Bank 28th Annual A Taste of Art event is set to kick off February 20th at the Westmark Hotel. The evening will showcase the work of a number of local artists. Our featured artist is Sarah Tabert. Um, so she came to us and um, we helped partner with her on this project. And she's donated this piece behind me. Um, and then some of the local businesses who are, have bought corporate tables have also purchased local art to donate to this event for other people to buy. So I think the synergy between the community and the artists are really great. Blues and golds inspired by the Vincent Van Gogh painting that encapsulates the whimsy of a clear night's astral spread will be the backdrop for activities throughout the evening. And so we'll have dinner auctions, we'll have a dessert auction, and we have lots of art um, covering the walls of the Westmark Gold Room. Proceeds from the event will help fund Fairbanks Counseling and Adoption programs. Fairbanks Counseling and Adoption has been serving the Fairbanks community for almost 40 years. And when people ask, what is it you do at FCA, I tell them, we're all in the business of families. We are literally in the business of making families stronger and helping to bring them together. So Taste of Art helps us come up with the resources to help create strong families in the community. And when you have strong families in the community, the community is stronger. FCA assisted 122 teens last year, serving more than 10,000 meals. The adoption department worked with around 150 families, exploring the possibility of taking in a child. Well, I think as a lot of people in the community know, with the budget problems with the state and with diminishing resources from both the federal and state governments, agencies like ours, we count more and more on the community to come out and help support us through the fundraising efforts. So it's, it's a very important event for us in terms of helping generate the resources we need to do the work. Those interested in attending can register online at the Fairbanks Counseling and Adoption website. Reporting, I'm Mike Fussell. That's Interior Tainment, brought to you by Midnight Sun Family Medicine. Up next in sports, we take a look at Nanook and Ice Dogs Hockey. Then you'll see how the West Valley Wolf Pack are doing in the first day of high school hockey state tournament. Pl Plus, Plus <laughs> Lathrop gets a new head football coach. <laughs> Those stories, Those stories are, more are more after, after the, the break. break. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Coop Clark filling in for Joe Cook this Thursday night. He is on assignment in Los Anchorage. Mm -hmm. We start with another Yukon Quest update. The top five mushers made their way into Dawson City yesterday. While they were resting, more dog teams made into the checkpoint last night and today. Veteran Torsten Konart came in just before 5.45 a.m. local time. Tom Johansson, the first rookie to make it to Dawson, followed about an hour later. Yuka Honda was next with only 10 dogs in. And as we mentioned yesterday, mushers will enjoy a mandatory 36-hour rest before heading back out on the trail to Pelly Crossing. Now, despite a disappointing season, the Nanook hockey team is down, but definitely not out. After getting swept by the Ferris State Bulldogs last weekend, UAF is 5-13-4 in the WCHA. They are still just two points behind UAA for the eighth and final postseason spot. The Nooks have six games left, and four of those are at home, including the Governor's Cup. Alaska will need to figure out a way to win at home. Their last win in the Carlson Center was on November 6th. After this bye week, the Nanooks host the Falcons of Bowling Green on February 19th and 20th. 
Our local junior hockey team has a commanding lead in the Midwest Division and they are a lock for the playoffs. But before that happens, they'll have a road series against the Springfield Junior Blues this weekend. These teams met back in mid-January for the first time and the Ice Dogs outscored them 10-2 in a sweep. The first game was tight 3-2 win before a 7-0 blowout. The Junior Blues are third in the Midwest. The Ice Dogs at 33-7-3 will can an extender maintain their one-point lead in the overall NHL standings over Wichita with a couple of wins this weekend. And right after this series, head coach Trevor Stewart and nine Ice Dogs players will head to the NHL Top Prospects Tournament in Plymouth, Michigan this Monday and Tuesday. Players will compete in front of hundreds of college scouts. Now we switch to high school hockey. This afternoon in Wasilla, the West Valley Wolfpack skate in the first round game of the 4A state tournament. They took on Eagle River, a team making their first ever state tournament. The Wolfpack, last year's state runner-up, beat the Wolves 8 to nothing in January. This was a different Wolves team today. At the nine-minute mark of the first period, Ben Rinke scores on a power play to give Eagle River a 1 to nothing lead. But Stoshi Skorolowski, the career points leader in West Valley history, scores an equalizer in the second period off a Jared Lee's assist. After that, Trent Burnham got really hot, making stop after stop at point-blank range, matching Lane Wood on the other side, and then some. Early in the third period, Josh Lynn would score the go-ahead goal for the Wolves. Burnham burns the Wolfpack with 30 incredible saves, and Eagle River upsets the number one seed West Valley 2-1. Heartbreak tonight for the 2015 state runner-ups. We really just didn't want to lose that bad again. We wanted to hold it to at least one goal game, and we did exactly that. Uh, it's just it's amazing feeling. A lot of kids tried hard, really hard, and uh, we're making history this year. I was looking for Sutton McDonald in the top side. I thought, oh, he's right there. I'll pass it there. And it, I didn't know it went in. It touched around the ref, pointing his hand down, and I was like, I just scored. And we had opportunities. We had some great opportunities, and some days the puck goes in, some days it doesn't. It's just one of those days. You know, at the end of the day, I'm proud of my guys. They left it out there. I mean, obviously, they're, they're disappointed right now. I'm disappointed. You know, we had, thought we had a good chance to win a state tournament, but in a one-game show, anything can happen. It's only February, but football is all year long, especially for the Lathrop Malamutes who make a move. Wednesday evening, Lathrop announced that Luke Balosh will be the head coach of their football team. Balosh was the head assistant coach and offensive coordinator under head coach Rusty Ham. Ham retired last fall. Balosh helped guide to a state semifinal appearance, railboat title, and three dog bowl wins. His offensive system will also help to produce numerous all-conference and all-state players in just four seasons. The Malamutes finished 4-4 four four last season and lost by a point to eventual state champion West Anchorage in the state quarterfinals. There are two weekends left in the high school ski season, so that means regional championships are coming up. This Friday and Saturday are the Mid-Alaska Conference Championships. Local teams in Lathrop, West Valley, North Pole, Hutchison, and Monroe will compete in distance and relay races. Teams will try to dethrone the Wolfpack, who swept the regional titles last year. They were led by two-time champion Jenna DeFalco and rising star Ben Koenig. The first MAC championship races state Friday at 3 p.m. Day 2 begins on Saturday at 11 a.m. at the Birch Hill Rec area. And this Saturday night is fight night at the Carlson Center, yeah. Bennett Promotions will have a solid as a rockin' fighting championship 11 this weekend. There will be no love lost between fighters on Valentine's weekends. The main event will feature Colin Reuter taking on Marquez Fassin. Reuter, who defended his welterweight title at AFC 118 and back in November, will be put, put solid as a rock 170-pound belt on the line. Seth Kroll and Marcus Freed will battle in the co-main event. Lather product Cody Wareham will see some action in a women's MMA match against Hannah Bobby. The fight starts at 7 p.m. at the Carlson Center. And that'll do it for tonight for sports. Sorry for butchering all those names. Thanks for watching. Mike Schultz is next with weather. We'll catch you next time. Hello, everyone. Welcome back into Thursday Night Weather. Mike Schultz with you once again. We started off this morning with a few flakes of snow, but skies cleared out, and it uh, turned out to be a pretty nice day. We're looking at uh, skies to be, for the most part, pretty clear to partly cloudy right on through the weekend, and temperatures will continue to warm. This is amazing. Tonight, we're going to be talking about a little warmer tonight with scattered clouds. You might even see some more auroras if the clouds clear out for you. Also, the weekend is looking just fantastic. Really, really nice weather. And you know what? Then there's no end in sight for the above normal temperatures to continue all the way through, it looks like, all of next week. So this is really amazing weather we're talking about. What's going on as far as the uh, satellite picture? You can see a lot of rain moving across southeast Alaska, and that's about it. No real organized systems down in the Gulf of Alaska. A little bit of shower activity moving across the Kenai Peninsula and the Prince William Sound area, but around the Fairbanks area, mm -mm, nothing going on there at all. 
as far as our map is concerned. Over Ketchikan, against the rain that's falling today, 50 degrees for their high, 40 degrees and some rain around Juneau. Just partly cloudy skies at uh, Anchorage, but right at freezing, 32 degrees. Kodiak, more showers, 37 degrees. Cold Bay, 40 and cloudy. And over the west side of the state, a little cooler temperatures there, 12 degrees at Bethel and only 5 degrees at Nome. So a little pocket of cold air uh, parked over that area. North of the uh, Brooks Range, it's one below at Barrow. And Fort Yukon, seven degrees and clear skies. Lower 48 weather, the high pressure continues to be the dominant feature over the western half of the country, pouring all that moisture up over the Pacific Northwest. So Seattle and Portland, Oregon are getting uh, dumped on pretty good. Then the uh, moisture slides over that high pressure area and right on down into the central and eastern sections. A little bit of snow breaking out across the central plains, but nothing real heavy expected there. And as far as the hot temperatures, well, look what's going to be happening tomorrow in California. 10 to 20 degrees above normal, and they're feeling like it's a springtime pattern. It could be the way things are shaping up. The overall outlook for the uh, jet stream is once again calling for it to become a little more, not quite zonal, but a little more northwest to southeast, and then dipping down a little bit over the eastern half of the country. But brutal cold temperatures are coming across the Great Lakes, which means a more lake effect snows going on there and uh, very cold temperatures too. Okay, time once again for our kids weather and all this week we're talking with the kids from Weller Elementary School, but tonight we're going to hear from the teacher with a cool weather fact. Hello, my name is Mr. Kraska and this is my fifth grade class at Weller Elementary and I'm here to share a weather fact with you. Class, did you know that the strongest winds ever measured on Earth during a storm were 253 miles per hour during a cyclone north of Australia in 1993? Wow. And of course, the kids are amazed like they always are. Again, thanks to Mount McKinley Bank for your sponsoring our kids' weather. Next week, we're going to be visiting with the kids from Wood River Elementary School. All right, here's your forecast for the... Uh, State for tomorrow. For the northern sections, fog and blowing snow for Barrow. Kind of a sloppy day there. Partly cloudy skies at Nome and mostly cloudy skies in the Fort Yukon region. Here in the interior, not too bad. Just mainly partly cloudy skies at Fairbanks, mostly cloudy skies for Healy and Delta Junction. Over southeast Alaska, keep the umbrella handy. Lots of rain expected there. Cloudy with periods of rain for Juneau and Ketchikan. Temperatures a little cooler than they were today. Over the southwest part of the state, looks like rain and snow at Cold Bay. A chance of snow in Bethel and rain showers are likely for Kodiak. And over the uh, south central sections, we'll be looking at snow showers in Anchorage, cloudy skies at Homer, and rain and snow for Valdez. And as uh, temperatures go out at the airport right now, here's what it looks like. And you can see that our high today was 18 degrees. The low last night, zero, currently 11 degrees. Record high, 46, 2004, 53 below in 1932. Sunrise and sunset over the eight hour barrier, eight hours and three minutes to be exact. And as far as our forecast for tonight, scattered clouds and warmer in the hills, three degrees for the overnight low. Tomorrow's forecast, 23 degrees, becoming even warmer by afternoon and more clouds moving in the picture. And the five day outlook, you gotta love these temperatures. Look at that, 25 and 26, all the way across the board there with overnight lows also warming up very nicely to the 10 degree mark. Unheard of this time of year, amazing. We're loving it though. And our picture for tonight, this one's sent in by Keith Charlie at Minto. He was able to capture a sunset there. And as always, if you have a photograph to share, send it to photos at ktvf11.com. And I noticed something last night going hmm. home from work. Dusk. Dusk. You could actually yeah. see the yeah. sky. Yeah, Light. absolutely. I love it's it. It's returning. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> Especially, let's get into March and it'll really start. Yeah, it's yes. just going to be. So eight, we're over eight hours of daylight. That's great. Yeah, very good. Yeah. All right, before we go, a reminder that KTVF is having another watch and win contest running every night during the Fairbanks Evening News and News Center final. That's right, Daryl. It's your chance to win <laughs> 400 gallons of heating fuel from Alaska Fuel Services. You are right, Sarah. Just look for the uh, Alaska Fuel Services truck sometime during one of the newscasts. That's right, Mike. Then go to our website at webcenter11.com and find the contest section and enter for a chance to win. Good luck. <laughs>
That's right, Sarah. That's right, Mike. That will wrap up this edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. We're glad you could join us. Well, tonight on NBC Nightly News, after weeks of a standoff, the final holdouts have surrendered in Oregon. That's up next with Lester Holt. Join us here six days a week at 6 and 11 or online anytime at webcenter11.com. Indeed. From all of us here at the News Center, have a great night. Indeed. Thank you.